This video tutorial will demonstrate how to apply some transformations to the basic quadratic function, which I've graphed here for you. So you remember the first thing you want to do when, when transforming functions is just to make sure that you've accounted for any sort of bizarre factoring situations where you might end up skewing your translation. Remember, I could factor out a negative 2 out of my uh, both terms inside my brackets here. And you'll see that that has a pretty profound effect on your horizontal translation. Okay, and we'll get to that in a minute. But remember, it's always important just to, to factor out that coefficient in front of your, your x term. Okay, so reading from left to right, the first thing that you can see really is that there is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. There is a negative here, and we'll get to that in a moment. But I am going to be stretching my, my function by a factor of 3. So I'm going to be multiplying all of my y values by 3. You can see that I've also got a horizontal compression by a factor of 2. Remember when the, when the k value, or the, the value associated with a horizontal stretch or compression, is a whole number like 2, or if it's greater than 1, you're going to see that there is a horizontal compression. Okay, you can see that these negatives in front of my function and in front of k value here, these guys, remember, tell you that you've got a reflection over the x and the y-axis. So why don't we start by just applying those first three transformations. Remember, it's always a good idea to, to apply your stretches, compressions, reflections first before your translations. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. So I've just kind of prepared a graph for you just to sort of speed things up a bit. But just remember, for your vertical stretch, you're going to take all of your y values and multiply by 3. For your horizontal compression, you're going to divide your x values by 2. So all of these x values would be sort of half as far away from the axis. Okay, so I've just quickly made this, this graph for you just to sort of illustrate that quickly. In order to reflect this, remember that parabolas are symmetric. So you can see just quickly, if I was to flip this thing, so there's virtually no change. So I, I've already sort of, we'll just say I've done my reflection over my y-axis. Uh, however, if I were to reflect this over the x-axis, uh, you'd see a pretty dramatic change. And I'll, I'll quickly uh, demonstrate that just by flipping my function. So you can see it's kind of off my, my screen a bit, but I think you get the idea that I sort of reflected my, my parabola over the x-axis. Okay, the next thing I can look at is my translations. You can see that I've got a shift to the right by 2. Remember, if we didn't factor out that negative 2, many people would say, oh, well, you've got a, a shift to the left by 4. You'd end up with a very different graph. So make sure you always factor out that coefficient in front of x. So I can pick this thing up and move it to the right by 2. And you can follow along with me here that I've moved two units. You can see all of these points have come with that translation. The last thing that I want to do is look at the number at the end of my function. Remember that tells you that you've got a vertical translation up by one unit. So you can pick it up by the vertex and, and just shift it up one unit. And you can see all the points come with it. And that right there would be your, your final graph. So remember it's always a good idea just to sort of label your graph once you've transformed, just to sort of ensure that whoever's looking at your work is able to tell the difference between your, your original base graph and your transformed function. 